This news update is brought to you by... Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Catch the sun power. This is the noon Barbados Today update for Friday, November 15th, 2013. I'm Dawn Paris. The way is now clear for government to carry out a multi-million dollar smart energy program across the island. We now go to Emmanuel Joseph, who's at government headquarters, with the details. This morning, Prime Minister Sanders Stewart signed agreements totaling over $50 million with the Inter-American Development Bank and the European Union at its Bay Street offices, under which the IDB will provide a $35 million loan and the European Union a $60 million grant towards the venture. Prime Minister Stewart said the program will put government in a position to retrofit buildings and make effective use of renewable energy technologies do capacity building and institutional strengthening. He revealed too that the government will be able to experiment with pilot projects such as the vehicles. Stuart noted that the government energy, uh, the smart energy program, which laid the foundation for an enhancement of this country's competitiveness, all for the benefit of an economy currently experiencing major challenges. He said the initiative will be equivalent to the existing smart energy fund which targets the private sector and households. Emmanuel Joseph of Barbados Bay from the government headquarters on Bay Street. The opposition spokesman on transport has blasted government and transport board for the state of terminals in the city. Dwight Sutherland says the Princess Alice Terminal, Fairchild Street Bus Terminal and the River Bus Stand are being grossly neglected. He, opposition leader Mia Motley and MP Cynthia Ford yesterday toured the terminals as they continued their rubbing shoulders initiative. Sutherland says a shelter is needed at one terminal, there's inadequate garbage disposal and poor drainage. A senior lawman is making it clear that police charged three nation newspaper officials only after consultation with the Director of Public Prosecutions. Acting Commissioner of Police Mark Thompson says while lawmen felt they had enough evidence to charge publisher Viviane Gittins, Editor-in-Chief Roy Morris and senior journalist Sanka Price, they took the DPP's advice on the matter. He issued a statement late, late yesterday evening after the trio appeared in court charged with allowing an indecent photo of two minors to be published. Two teenage boys were also charged a day before with photographing two children having sex in a classroom. The video was posted on Facebook and an image from it was published in the October 26th edition of the Saturday Sun. ACP Thompson says a third investigation is continuing but he gave no details. And in sports, West Indies were facing the prospect of yet another innings defeat inside three days after India took command of the second test at the Wankhede Stadium in Mumbai today. Playing on the second day, India piled up a mammoth 495 all-out in reply to the Windies 182, a lead of 313 runs on first England first innings. At the close, West Indies were tottering on 43 for 3 with Kiran Powell, Darren Bravo and night watchman Tino Best all dismissed in quick succession. There's regional and international news after this short break. McInerney Quality and Consolidated Finance invite you to trade in your old car for a new one. So, bring your car and come to McInerney Quality in Wildey. That's right, all trade-ins are welcomed. Any make or model, we'll trade towards your new car. Plus, you get two years free insurance when you purchase a Kia, Mazda or Ford. And with on-the-spot financing by Consolidated Finance, you can drive away with something new. So, bring your car and come to McInerney Quality in Wildey. All trade-ins are welcomed. In the region, prison officers in Trinidad and Tobago are calling for bulletproof vests of duty firearms and housing in safe areas. They've been protesting last week's killing of a colleague. The officers outlined their demands during a meeting yesterday with Justice Minister Emmanuel George and other officials. We turn to the international scene now when China will relax its policy of restricting most couples to having only one child. In future, families will be allowed two children if one parent is an only child.
That's our noon update. Join us again at 6 this evening. Until then, log on to www.barbadostoday.bb for more news and sports. I'm Dawn Paris. This news update brought to you by... Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bike. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Yes, your sun power.